Hey, I'm James from Soaking at Barbecue, and one of the things that I love about Komodo style grills is the abundance of accessories. But with all things like accessories, some are winners and some should frankly go back to the lab and spend a little bit more time in research and development. So today I'm answering the question if it is worth or ready for prime time to upgrade our tried and true analog temperature probe on our dome to something like this digital meat minder probe. Let's get into it. I want to thank the team at MeatMinder for sending me this unit to test. This video is not sponsored endorsed, but this is the type of product that honestly, frankly, I couldn't see myself buying. When they reached out and said, would you like to test it? I told them this honestly isn't the type of product that I would buy. And they sent it along anyways and said, you're free to review it exactly uh, as you would if something that you went out and bought, good, bad, and ugly, we want to make the product better. So I respect and appreciate that. This video is not sponsored or endorsed, and I am going to give you my true and honest opinion opinion, good, bad, and ugly. So without further ado, let's get into unboxing our meat minder. Get it out of its packaging. So right out of the box, we've got two uh, temperature probes, a probe to use for grill. And uh, this also does come with a no cost app available on most app stores. So Android or iOS. Uh, in terms of looking at the unit itself, we've got like a normal temperature gauge, the ability to fasten this to inside of our Komodo. So I'm going to remove that. Open up our battery cover, install the provided AA batteries. Got a prompt there, I'm not sure if it's coming through on screen, but to activate the device, so I'm gonna download that and scan the QR code and or turn it on uh, for Bluetooth and see if the app recognizes and pairs with it. Well, maybe shouldn't have been so quick to turn that off. Now I can't bring it back to life. Let's try that again. Mm, okay, maybe small chance the batteries that were provided that worked, initially I heard a beep, uh, the batteries that uh, shipped might be dead. Let me get a fresh set of double A's and see if that's our problem. Otherwise, welcome to the world's shortest review video. Okay, let's see if batteries are our problem. I've grabbed two fresh double A's. Oh, there's our beep again. Hopefully that was it. Maybe just shipped with some dead batteries. All right, back to life. Okay, let's try the pairing process again. Okay, let's remove our stock Komodo Joe probe. Drop in this very large bad boy. Install our hardware. Well, that was bound to happen. Well, that's nothing to do with the product. That's just me being an idiot, dropping our hardware into our charcoal basket, which I don't see. So now I'm gonna try and drop it into the kick-ash can and hopefully find it from there. Well, I don't see anything obvious in the can. So I'm gonna go sift through some ashes. Be back in a minute, hopefully with some hardware. Found a lock washer. Okay, we're back with hardware. I'm gonna go bare hand this time instead of through gloves. So hopefully I do not drop my hardware. I am not cut out for gold mining apparently. That was a pain in the ash. All right, we've got our digital gauge on. Let's do a quick test fire. And so my game plan here for testing this is get things up, get it stable so it's nice and smooth. Then we're going to remove this and then drop back in our Komodo Joe analog gauge and see if there's any difference between the two. At least with the Komodo Joe gauge, I do know if it is ever uh, out of calibration, you can calibrate this in boiling water by using the set screw on the back. I'll have to check the uh, instructions and put it up on text here, but this being digital, I'm not sure if there is a way to recalibrate this or if it needs calibration since it's uh, digital. Grill blazer grill gun, fire that up. <laughs> Let that come up to temp. Okay, we're riding along right at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, which is our dome temperature. You can see here I installed uh, a temperature gauge to sit right on our grid. This question comes up so often that I thought it was worthwhile showing that, that we're seeing exactly a, well, a 39, a 40 degree differential between our ambient dome temperature as well as the probe sitting directly on the grid grates. This is about 40 minutes since I saw you last, so we are completely heat soaked up to temperature, seeing you know ambient temperatures of about 165 degrees Fahrenheit on our ceramics. But let me show you the uh, probe here. So there you can see we are located right in the middle. So what I'm gonna do now, take it fast forward, is just compare while we're locked in on our event settings at 300 degrees Fahrenheit to see if we get any sort of different information with the analog. And I will leave the 
pit probe uh, attached to this unit, even though it'll be off to the side. So we can continue to compare the grate temperatures, which we're just sitting below 340 degrees. Okay, you can see we've stabilized right at 300 degrees on our analog dome and we are back to within one degree, uh, exactly where we were before, 338 degrees on the grate temperature. After everything is stable, I've left the vents in the same position. And so this brings up an interesting point. So let's move into our recap. So as you can see, working away behind me, there's no issue with the meat minder performing its task as advertised. But if we're honest, this was never really the main concern. The concern for me is what problem does this solve? Or is this a solution in search of a problem? As you can see from the close-up shots, the fit and finish trade-offs that you make trying to get a product to fit everything from a Weber kettle to a Kamado Joe to a pizza oven to an offset is that you design a universal plate that just doesn't look like it belongs on my Kamado Joe. Maybe I would get used to this over time, but it protrudes significantly beyond any OEM fit and finish. Second or first, depending on uh, what you observe first is the cable management. And so something that I would love to see is improving on issues that we have in the past. This is my Inkbird BBQ 4T. And as you can see, I always struggle with a rat's nest of cables. It's one of the reasons I don't use it that often is these things like magnetically intertwine themselves somehow. And it is always a bit of a pain to get them uh, clean and untangled and ready to go. And we're gonna have that same issue if we unbox and open all of our cables, depending on how you store them with the meat minder. I would have loved to see it incorporate something like meter where we have a wireless probe. So now if I had a probe inside and if I had a nice, clear, easy to read display on the outside, it could see the connection with a wireless probe, a digital display, maybe a wireless angle starts to make sense. But then we still run into the limitation that it's actually not controlling our temperatures, it's just giving us the information. And like before, when people struggle with dome temperature versus the grid temperature, where there's that 30 to 40 degree difference, just like we observed in analog and digital mode today, it doesn't inject any more clarity here. So people who were confused before may continue to be confused when you see two different informations. Why is my dome temperature reading so much different than my great level temperature? This is the same with the meat minder. And if you are not comfortable controlling your temperatures, it doesn't plug in with a third party fan controller. Something that I've been testing as part of my ultimate fan controller battle that I'll be releasing at the tail end of this year. So I appreciate the team at MeatMinder for sending this unit out for me to evaluate. You asked for the honest feedbacks. So my honest feedback would be to stare or maybe ask other customers in terms of what problem they're trying to solve. Is it cables and cable management? Is it a wireless solution or integrating with wireless temperature controllers and providing uh, easy to read information? Is it the fit and finish and improving on what looks OEM or what looks aftermarket on your product? Uh, and or is it tying into a temperature control unit for people that might be struggling with the temperature? But neither of these three potential opportunities from cable management to wireless or temperature control are part of the unit that I received in testing. And so as such, my first take on the meat minder is I'm going to give it a a pass until some of these future innovations can be incorporated and it solves some practical problems that I face and I imagine many of you might be facing in your backyard. That's it for today though. I'm James from Smoking Dad Barbecue signing off. Remember, don't be afraid to fire it up.